guys, welcome. Today we've got a, kind of a special SUV to do today. It's a 2019 Jeep Trackhawk, and if you guys don't know, it's a supercharged V8, uh, all-wheel drive. It's just a absolute monster, super fast, uh, 707 horsepower, and think about 650 torque. It's got massive Brembo brakes on it, um, ceramic brakes, and uh, this thing is just an absolute beast. Um, I haven't ridden in this one personally, but I've seen plenty of videos and they just take off like a bat out of heck. So anyway, we're going to be doing an inside and out detail on this, um, cleaning the inside of the wheel barrels and the brake calipers, uh, doing an engine bay um, <clears throat> clean as well on this, and then uh, yeah, just getting everything tidied up and getting... Uh, all the dirt and stuff out of here. Uh, it's not too bad on the inside. The front's a little bit worse than the back, but um, overall it's not bad, uh, so it shouldn't take too long. Um, but uh, yeah, it's nice getting uh, some of the vehicles that aren't completely trashed uh, to get detailed. I mean, it needs a little sprucing up and stuff, but it's uh, nothing compared to what I normally get, so it's nice getting vehicles that aren't completely trashed. But uh, this one's not really a daily driver as well, so that helps as well. You can see the front driver's side area usually it gets the most foot traffic and everything, so it's got a little more crud on there. One thing I'm really surprised about the wear on the leather seat on that side bolster. Um, it's really kind of fraying apart, and it felt really thin, so that was a little concerning to me about kind of the quality of that leather seat. But uh, you can see this sweet uh, supercharged V8 here. We're going to be pressure washing the loose dirt and debris and then we'll be scrubbing it here with uh, our wheel woolly brush. It's ultra soft. It's uh, safe on paint and everything so no worries there. And we'll get this thing scrubbed up and blasted and then we'll blow dry it and get it looking nice and shiny clean for them. For me personally, I like to um, set my inside and out detail prices um, maybe a little bit on the lower end and then have a bunch of different little add-ons that people can kind of customize their detail package. Um, for instance, on the interior detail, um, I clean everything except for the headliner. That's an add-on just because of uh, a little more liability and the time-consuming nature it can take to clean those stains out. Um, some people don't care about that, so I'll kind of pass the savings on to them. If they want to clean, then that's an extra cost. Uh, same with shampoo and extract and then uh, obviously um, as a whole the overall detail price depends on the condition i mean obviously i'm not gonna charge the same price for somebody that uh, just bought a vehicle a month ago and uh, compared to somebody that's neglected their vehicle for six or seven years and they've had kids in there and dogs and it's just absolute disaster detail so um, there's uh, some influx on the price difference there, but I'm curious, uh, do you guys offer a lot of add-ons on your detailing packages, or how do you normally operate on that regard? If someone selects uh, engine bay cleaning, I typically like to do that first just because it kind of splatters and makes uh, quite a bit of mess on there, um, so that makes sense to do the engine bay first, and then I'll do the door jams, and then the wheels and tires, um, just because I use the wheel and tire bucket for cleaning the engine bay and the door jams and I don't want to mix the brake dust and all the crud and stuff um, with the other parts of the vehicle. So that's my methodology behind that. Uh, vehicles in the engine bay where I ended up using some sort of um, shine on the plastics and the rubber parts of the engine bay. I like to use Carpo Pearl uh, diluted five to one and that gives kind of a nice satin finish uh, and kind of rejuvenates the rubber and the uh, plastics in the engine bay and it makes it just give it a kind of a nice pop and makes it look better. What do you guys like to use for um, engine bay plastic restore? These door jams are pretty clean to start with but um, I always like to give them a nice little pressure wash just to blast any loose uh, dirt and crud away and uh, then I'll hit them up with the wheel and tire brush and get them scrubbed clean, uh, just so I'm not dragging a bunch of grit and stuff and possibly scratching the door jams um, with the kind of built up dust and dirt and stuff. Um, 
And then the wheels and tires uh, inside the fender liners had some mud splatter and stuff, so I'm just doing a pre-rinse, getting that knocked off as much as possible. And then we'll get the wheels and tires, just a light rinse on there. And then I'll be using my DIY um, detail all clean diluted 15 to 1, which is just the standard dilution ratio for exteriors. And um, I'm using my AK foamer. Uh, I need to haven't pumped it up enough, so it's kind of petering out, but um, yeah, I, I like using that. It foams up and it kind of just have this nice little bubble bursts of uh, new all clean to kind of help break down that brake dust and the road grime and stuff on there. So you can tell uh, the ceramic brakes, they put off a lot of brake dust. There's a lot of uh, gunk and stuff coming off the wheels. So it's important to keep uh, ceramic uh, brake wheels and tires nice and clean or you're going to have uh, real stubborn junk on there that's hard to get uh, cleaned off. As you can tell, I'm using uh, whatever wheel and tire <clears throat> brush is working well in conjunction. Um, just different tools to get into the little nooks and crannies. Um, with these massive rotors and stuff, it's hard to kind of get into all the little areas with just one or two different tools. So I use uh, detail brushes, different wheel and tire cleaning uh, brushes, and uh, they all work well in conjunction with each other, get, get everything as clean as I can. Curious, what do you guys think about the uh, yellow brake calipers on this track hawk? Do you think uh, yellow looks real good, or do you think red would look better? I personally think uh, maybe red would be a little, little better. Just looks a little more racy. But uh, curious, what do you guys think? And write it in the comments below. At least on the back wheel, the uh, brake rotors are a bit smaller. Uh, obviously that makes sense. The front is going to be doing mo the majority of the stopping power on a vehicle or any vehicle. And uh, so I've got a lot better clearance to get my wheel and tire brushes in there to scrub the entire uh, wheelbarrow from the outside area. So that makes it nicer being able to access everything a lot easier. Um, so. As you can tell, this thing needed uh, a good scrub down too. You can see the soap dripping off the bottom. It's just, it's, it's pretty nasty. I mean, it's not pure black, but it definitely needs uh, a good scrub. So I'm just using my Sunjo pressure washer um, combined with the Uber Flex 50 foot hose and the MTM foam cannon. Uh, I've had real good success with all those uh, parts working in conjunction with each other. I haven't had any problems. Uh, the only thing I've had to replace on the MTM foam cannon is the uh, mesh kind of screen on there. Um, that kind of makes the soapy water into a uh, foam. I've had to replace that once. Um, but that was kind of my own fault. I did not um, rinse after each use like you're supposed to. Um, when you're done using the foam cannon, you're supposed to run water through it. And uh, that helps clean that little mesh screen out so it doesn't get clogged with uh, dried soap particulates. That makes sense. Um, but. Since I replaced that, I haven't had any issues, and the pressure washers work great. Um, so yeah, I have no complaints. I like to do a dry foam on the vehicle instead of uh, pre-rinsing. Um, that helps the soap kind of attack and attach itself uh, better to the dirt and pull it off the vehicle. Um, if you're just doing a pressure wash with the water first, um, that can kind of push the dirt and stuff and um, can possibly create scratches in the paint um, that weren't there before. So it's better to do a, a dry foam with the soap first. That helps uh, break the uh, crud off the vehicle and drag it down to the ground. And then uh, after I'm done there, we'll foam it again and 
fit in there with the contact wash. One other thing I did change on the MTM foam cannon was uh, I changed the orifice size. Um, so it does output a bit more foam on there. As you can see, it's um, more than enough than I need, and it's uh, nice thick foam. It gives kind of a, uh, a thick lather, almost like a shaving cream effect on the vehicle. So there's plenty of lubricity and uh, everything. I don't have to worry about scratching the vehicle when I put the foam cannon on there and then when I'm using the two bucket wash method. So no worries there with scratching. You might be wondering why am I foam canning foam using the foam cannon again after I just washed it. Uh, I'm just putting a fresh layer of uh, foam on there for my uh, clay bar process. I'm using that perforated, perforated synthetic decontamination towel, uh, fine grade from uh, Rag Company, and uh, I just want to have plenty of lubrication on there and uh, no issues when I'm using the. Uh, clay towel on there to uh, get any bonded contaminants. This thing was um, fairly clean, um, but I'm just going to go through the whole vehicle and just make sure everything is good before I rinse off and then put on my uh, DIY detail ceramic gloss and uh, dry off the vehicle after that. So now this is a $70,000 ish uh, vehicle, so it's uh, nothing to laugh at, but I try to um, treat all my detail vehicles the same. Um, sometimes with more expensive vehicles you spend a little more uh, time uh, just trying to eliminate any possible issues you might have with the vehicle, um, causing scratches or damage and stuff, uh, just because uh, having a mistake or a problem on a vehicle that's that expensive uh, can really cost you. But uh, I try to treat all the vehicles that I detail the same, whether it's a $4,000 Toyota Camry old thing or a $100,000 sports car, or a, kind of a, a sporty SUV like this thing. Um, just try to be careful and treat the each vehicle as if it was my own. Um, and yeah, it's just kind of the way I do business. I really like the DIY detail uh, ceramic gloss. It's got kind of a nice cherry scent on it and it works as a drying aid. So um, helps um, with the uh, toweling and drying process of the vehicle and um, gives some good protection for the clear coat. So it's a win-win there. And uh, it doesn't take very many sprays, uh, one to two per panel to adequately protect and uh, do its job. So um, a 16 ounce bottle lasts a real long time. Same thing with the perforated um, synthetic decontamination, the clay towel. Um, I bought it when I first started detailing and um, I have detailed dozens and dozens of cars. Uh, the clay towel is just starting to break down a little bit, but um, it's still fine and I've used it on tons of vehicles. So. Uh, there's a great value for money um, with the perforated synthetic decontamination towel. It lasts for a long time, even though they're, I think, about 35 or 40 bucks now. Um, they'll last for so many vehicles that the value is really there. Now that I'm done with the outside, time to move on to the inside. Um, there's some loose debris and hairs and things in the trunk area, so we'll get that all, do a preliminary vacuum. And then here in a little bit, I'll go over with the drill brush to um, loosen up any um, hairs and debris that don't want to come up easily with just vacuuming process. Um, this trunk is honestly in real good shape, but I didn't need to use the drill brush to break up some of the um, debris and stuff that didn't want to come out. So there was a few little things here and there that um, needed to get knocked loose with the drill brush.
as you can tell, the uh, back passenger area, the flooring and the seats were not in bad condition at all. So it didn't take very long at all for me to get vacuumed and cleaned up appropriately. Front passenger um, area was a little more dirty, um, just has more foot traffic and more people sitting in it, uh, but overall it wasn't too bad. Um, just took a few minutes uh, doing some vacuuming here, pulling the mats out and getting everything up uh, ship shape. Um, but yeah, this, this wasn't too bad at all. Um, the weather kind of took a little bit of a turn. It started um, very lightly drizzling. Uh, thankfully it wasn't come down uh, real hard or anything. So, uh, with Washington weather, you never know whether it's gonna rain or be sunny, especially during winter time. Um, can't count on the weather to cooperate when you're doing details, but thankfully the weather wasn't bad at all, so can't complain here. When I'm doing details, I prefer the um, front seats to be manual just because it's a lot easier to um, zip the seats back and forth, slide them around as you need to make sure that you get underneath the seats and um, the carpeting and everything is um, clean as you can. Uh, with the power seats, it just takes a little bit longer. So that's one thing that I kind of prefer to have a manual. Now, um, people that actually own the vehicle, I'm sure they most of them prefer power just because uh, it's just one thing that's easier. But, uh, driver's side area was a little dirty. Um, mostly on the floor was where the, most of the dirt and stuff was. The um, driver's seat wasn't real bad at all. Um, besides some of the breakdown on the leather side bolster uh, where you're getting in and out of the vehicle, that was degrading pretty badly. But um, that's not uh, that's more of a manufacturing and quality concern along with um, how you're getting in and out of the vehicle. You can break that uh, side bolster down fairly quickly if you're not careful. So um, yeah, this uh, wasn't too bad. There wasn't too much ground in um, stuff into the carpet. So I was thankful for that. And these um, carpets were pretty easy to vacuum stuff out of. So uh, no complaints there really. time for me to start wiping everything down. Um, the trunk jams weren't really dirty and uh, so I just sprayed them down with some PNS interior cleaner and uh, wiped them down with my microfiber towels and then I'll get um, the trunk area and everything. Um, I'll wipe clean as well after I get done with that. So it's not too bad a condition so it shouldn't take too long to wipe it all down, get it all nice and clean. Rear trunk um, side trim panels weren't too bad at all, but um, we're just giving everything a quick wipe down, making sure everything is clean as much as we can get it clean, and uh, we'll move on to the next area. Next, I'll get the um, outside of the door painted door areas all wiped down, uh, get those dried off, and then we'll get the um, door jams and the uh, door panels cleaned up. Uh, these were in pretty good shape, so none of this really is going to take very long to wipe it down, but we're going to go through the process and do a complete clean. So we're going to wipe everything down, whether it looks all that clean or not. There's still some um, uh, mainly dust and little uh, debris and fingerprints and things, so we'll get it all cleaned up and make it look like new. Thank you. 
I just want to shout out to um, all my subscribers. Um, I just passed 450 subscribers recently, so I just want to thank you guys for your support. Um, if you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing. And uh, your likes, comments, and subscription is helping this channel grow, so I just want to, want to say a sincere thank you for that. Even the driver's um, door panel area was um, pretty clean, but uh, we'll just give everything a good wipe down and get this thing looking real nice. So we'll take uh, good care of the customer and make sure everything is nice and clean for them. Curious, what do you guys think about um, piano black trim on the exterior or interior of your vehicle? Personally, um, I don't really care for it. It's too easily scratched and it's um, hard to maintain that um, scratch free, glossy, shiny appearance. Um, especially if it's on like the lower the side skirts or the um, outside of the door, um, those really get scratched up. But even on the inside, it's hard to keep things not from getting scratched. Um, I personally think it's kind of a waste, but I'm curious what do you guys think about the piano black trim or uh, paint on vehicles, uh, regardless, inside or outside. Curious, what do you guys like to use for tire shine? Right now, I'm using McGuire's uh, Hot uh, Shine Tire Shine, and that gives a nice, uh, rich um, appearance without being uh, too too showy. And uh, I I like using it. I'm curious uh, what tire shine you guys enjoy using. Here I'm finishing off the leather seats with the leather conditioner uh, by Kosh Kimmy uh, Leather Star and uh, that'll help kind of rejuvenate and protect some of the leather and keep it kind of soft and supple, keep it from drying out. So we'll do that to the rear and the front seats and get that thing uh, protected and cleaned up how it should be. All right, so this detail's done. Uh, it took around four hours uh, to do inside and out, and uh, it wasn't too bad. Uh, the engine bay turned out nicely. It wasn't too dirty to begin with, but uh, the rain's starting to come down, but you can tell there's a nice difference uh, with the wheels and tires and just the overall look of the exterior, um, giving it a good uh, bath, if you say, and uh, clay towel treatment and uh, ceramic gloss added on there, giving some good protection on there and it's looking 
real nice and clean, no more splattered mud and uh, ceramic brake dust all over the wheels and tires. And that stuff, you leave it on there too long, kind of etch into the wheel paint and uh, sometimes make it almost impossible to remove. So it's always good to keep up on your vehicle and keep things uh, clean as you can. So I think this uh, detail turned out pretty well overall. Um, wasn't too bad dirt wise, so that was nice for me, not getting beat up too bad uh, when vehicles are just trashed. It's just it's tough on your body. Um, all the scrubbing and everything, I mean, you gotta price it accordingly, but it's nice not to have to beat your body up every day. Um, definitely feel blessed to get some of these vehicles that aren't so uh, dirty and uh, appreciate the customer for having me come over and clean their vehicle. So. Let me know what you guys think about this detail, how it turned out, and what do you guys think about this car? Would you ever own one if you could afford it? And uh, give me your reasons why or why not. Well, thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate it. Stay tuned for the next one.